Hey folks, welcome back. This time let's set up our interacting, get that started. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is fix our heal spell, so I'm going to right click, open up my player blueprint. I'm going to go to my cast spell command, drag it back a little bit, B left click for a branch, and I'm going to drag out the magic mode, and get an equal integer. And if it equals 2, then I want to go ahead and let that heal the player. That way they don't have to be on guard in order to get that one going. But if it's not 2, then I want to do that. So that way they can heal whenever, rather than having to be... See, so now they can just heal whenever, rather than have to go with that guard mode. But, anyway, let's get our interact menu set up. So, I'm going to, in our blueprint folder, right click, add a new folder. Call it, interactable, no, oh, interactables, interactable works, whatever. Right click, I'm going to create a blueprint class, uh, from the blueprints class, a blueprint interface. What this will do is it'll allow multiple different types of blueprint actors to call a similar function. I'm going to call this interact underscore bpi. I'm going to double click, open that up. This new function, I'm going to up here rename it to interact. Boom. And that's pretty much done. Now anything that has this interface associated with it will allow us to call a interact function. In my project settings under inputs, I'm going to add one called interact. Yo, no, just interact. And I'm going to put that standard for PC games, I think, is E. So, E key. And I'm going to clean this up real quick. So, let's just call this. Project selector. And remember, if you box select and hit C on the keyboard, you can put a comment box. So this is magic casting. Mana region. And last one will be spell execute. Now you can just kind of take a look and be like, oh, here's where I got to go to check that. Or blah, 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 you know. That whole thing. So, all right, right click. Let's call our interact function. And then we are going to, off of that, get all actors with interface. We want the interface to be our interact underscore BPI. Off this we're going to do a for each loop. That way it'll check all of the actors with this interact. And from the array element we want to find out if our character is overlapping. Is overlapping actor branch. And if it is, then we want to, from the array element again, call that interact message true. And that's pretty much all we got to do for that part. Uh, we'll add on to this later just because I like to have a collision or another actor for it to overlap with rather than the blueprint character itself just because that has some weird issues that happens but we'll do that in a bit. Alright so I'm going to right click back in here in the interactable folder, new folder. This one's going to be a treasure chest. Might add multiple so I'll just call it chest. Right click, add a blueprint class of an actor, call it 
treasure, oh, treasure chest underscore BP. Double click, open that up. Back here, I'm going to be using the Ancient Treasures uh, pack from Unreal Marketplace. It's a, all, all these are going to be free, so. But in the meshes folder, they have some cool treasure chests that we're going to use. So I'm going to use these basic ones for regular treasure chests, and then some of these for weapons chests, and all kinds of fun stuff. That's a nice helmet. I like that helmet. But right now, I'm going to grab chest 01C in our treasure chest BP, add a component, static mesh. And then I'll go back to the folder, get the SM chest 01D, add another component right there, and drag it up. Wait, I gotta make sure that's done like that. Zoom in just to make sure it lines up. Oh, maybe I don't need that one. Just to make sure it lines up at the top of the chest like it should. Move it back, try to line it up as close as possible. Just so that when we rotate it, it actually rotates like it's supposed to, because we're going to make it open up. But for now, I'm going to set that back to zero. And I'm going to add one more component of a sphere collision. No, I want that to be parented to the default scene root. Set its location down to the ground and increase the radius to... Mm, I think 100 looks okay, because we're going to have a, another radius that comes off of our character, kind of like this. That'll be our interact range, so that ought to be good. And in its event graph, I want to delete those. Event begin play cast to player BP off the object get player character and promote that to a variable player ref. Just that way, so we'll be able to add gold or items or whatever we feel like doing later on. And I'm going to add an event. I'm going to right click and just type in interact. And I want to get the interact message. Oh, pff, stupid. All right, first, class defaults, class settings we want to actually add that interface. So under class settings, go to interfaces, add, interact BPI, compile, and now we want to get the event interact. That way it'll call to the blueprint interface, figure out what we're supposed to do, boom. Once it's done with this, we will set relative rotation, set actor relative rotation. Drag out our chest lid, set relative, Ugh, okay, don't set actor relative, relative, drag the chest lid out and then do set relative rotation. So we're going to drag off and we want to do alert so that we can interpolate the rotation. Right now it's rotation is 0, 0, 0 so we don't have to set that anything. Right click, add timeline, opening, play from start, double click to open that up. Let's see, uh, one second, that might be too slow, but we'll do it for now. Add a key to it at zero, zero. One more key, right clicking, we'll set that to one, one. Scroll out, box select, hit this little zoom to fit horizontal, and right click, auto. Helps smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll update the relative rotation of our doohickey. 
lid. Couldn't think of that word for a second. We will go into our viewport, click it, and I'm going to rotate it back to something that looks decent. About there looks nice. So I'll just right click and copy that rotation. Go back to my event graph and promote that to a variable called opened. Compile and I will paste that in. And I want that to do that. Make sure you click shortest path, otherwise it kind of weirds out. But oh, drag this back a little bit. Right click do once. That way they can only open the chest one time and then it's yeah. So now let us treasure chest I'm gonna delete that enemy for a minute just so he's not in the way. I'm gonna drag this out. Why are you still open? Because you're still open in here. Okay. So, drag you over. When you're dragging things around, if you hold down the left shift, you can actually just pan the camera with it at the same time. So, and I'm going to run over and see if it works. Why aren't you? Oh. Hmm. Is it overlapping actor? Let's create our little interact radius real quick. So I'm gonna create a blueprint class of an actor and call it interact radius. Double click, open that up, and I'm just gonna add a sphere collision that is 100 on the radius. And I'm going to unclick hidden in game. That way I can see it when we attach it to our character. In our player blueprint, in our player blueprint, we go up to begin play. And we will spawn actor from class. We want it to be our interrupt radius. We want it to spawn at our meshes transform promote that to a variable called interact radius now we want to attach to component and we want the component to be our mesh um, in the socket I'm just gonna attach it at Fine. Let me double check with something real quick. Yeah, she's got a spine. I want to make sure that the bone was actually called spine. So. Okay, yes, spine. We want to snap to target. Snap, snap. And then let's check that. So now she's got that around her. Um, Actually, let's leave that empty. Okay, that'll work better. And now I will go back to the interacting right here. Make sure that it is overlapping our interact radius. And if it is, now it should. Oh, get out. Now it works. Okay. So that was the problem. I forgot to set up that uh, interact radius. So now we will be able to start making it to where we can interact with. Why can't you jump there? Why can't she jump? Let's see. Can jump. Oh. If you're having issues making your character jump, make sure can jump is defaulted to yes. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go back through and optimize all the coding and everything, make sure everything works a lot better and more fluidly later. But for now, 
there's that. And let's see if we add out oh, multiple chests. And we'll see that we can run around. Only that one opens. And that one. And now that one. Based off of the click and whether or not we're overlapping. And we'll be able to add items and all that too. But they'll be customizable, so you'll be able to drag them out. And actually, how long is this video? Uh, 15 minutes. Let's keep this one short. So, yeah, we'll update on those as we go on. But for now, there you go. So this is actually super important because uh, without this, then you have to cast to every actor in the thing, make sure you're overlapping it, and all that jazz. Whereas instead, you can just cast to everything that has that interact interface and fire them off that way. So that is super important. Otherwise, you gotta add a switch here and based on which switch you're got going. It, it's convoluted. You know, I'll show you all sometime the, the way I used to have the interact set up. It's ridiculously convoluted. But, yeah, so next time we'll start adding these giving your character items and those other fancy ones to give you weapons and all that jazz. So, other than that, thanks for dropping by. Oh, Definitely make sure to click save all. I keep forgetting to mention save all is important. That's your friend. He's your buddy. He gonna help you out. I'm gonna click him. He important. Alright, later.